What's up guys, Asian here again with another uh, kind of BTS video here with Brookmire. I'm just going to turn on the music a little bit here so you can hear me. Um, so today uh, we're going to be talking about the buff that Zoss made to damage shields and how that's going to impact how much damage you're going to be taking from PvE perspective. So we're not really going to be looking at PvP too much, or at least the values we're going to be using aren't going to be uh, PvP oriented, they're going to be more PvE oriented. Um, but the same kind of principles can apply to shields and PvP. You just have to take into consideration battle spirit. So your base shields are going to be half and your base damage is obviously going to be different because you're fighting players, not uh, you know boss monsters or anything like that. So what exactly are we talking about here with the damage shields? So Zoss made a change in the damage shield calculations uh, in Merkmire. So first of all, you can now deal critical hits against at damage shields. So this affects both PvP and PvE as well. So PvE monsters will not crit your shields because they don't crit at all, but you can crit PvE monster shields. So bosses like Zashasha, for instance, that have the damage shield, you'll be able to crit those. So um, it's a bit of a nerf to any fight where uh, the boss or whatever has a shield added onto it. Um, so that's something to kind of look forward to for PvE. You might see Mechanically Challenged or Hodor do, you know, 55 second Zaj Hasha uh, runs now, um, so we'll have to wait and see how how uh, quickly they'll be able to clear Zaj Hasha. Now this is kind of the big thing here. Uh, your spell and physical resistance now reduces incoming damage before it is applied to your damage shield. Um, so this basically um, shifts the damage equation around. So over here we have the damage equation that is normally applied um, right now on live. So in Somerset, um, what happens is you have the base hit and then you kind of take away any sort of damage done or damage received sort of modifiers and then you subtract your damage yield from that modification. And then afterward, that's when you start um, multiplying everything based on um, your resistances and blocking and everything like that. Um, so that's kind of how everything is applied when it comes to damage that's incoming to you. Uh, so for right now, uh, resistances are actually counted towards the latter end after um, damage shields are put up. So damage shields will only take into consideration uh, things like minor may, minor protection, things like that. And then you don't take into consideration um, your resistances. Now, however, they're going to be shifting um, the resistance part of things. So this part of the equation here is actually going to be shifted up to over here before the damage shields. Um, so it changes the equation a little bit and it is a overall buff uh, to the amount of damage you're able to mitigate if you're using a damage shield. So uh, down here you'll see that uh, mitigation before damage shields consists of maim, minor major, protection, minor major, aegis, minor major, and then all these other sort of passives that basically uh, have in their wording damage done, damage dealt, or damage received. So anything like that is going to affect you. So this does include things like CP, does include Blade Cloak. If you're using Standard of Might, that includes Standard of Might, um, and all these different sort of things here. Um, after the damage shield, that's where you have the blocking and physical spell resistance on live right now, and all of the other sort of passives. This so is the blocking passives from one hand and shield, uh, your, uh, your draconic power passive uh, so that is calculated after the damage shield so basically what's happening here is the physical spell resistance part here is actually being shifted up to this area here so what does that mean for the amount of damage you're actually able to mitigate well like i said it is a bit of a buff so i did do a couple of maths here so here is i just use a couple of different base hits so these hits are fairly representative of what you would expect to see in pve so an 80k hit is actually not unheard of in terms of base damage from a mob you're never actually going to see an 80k tooltip um because it does take into consideration whether you're blocking whether you have resistances things like that so even on a like dps where where their resistances are much lower than on a tank um it's still fairly um feasible that you will have an 80k uh, base hit. Then we're here, we're assuming that we have 30k resistances. Um, so tanks will try to hit up the max uh, cap, which is 33,000. Um, but for simplicity, I just kept it to 30,000. 50% reduction from block. Uh, so this is a DK passive. So we have 10% from while we're blocking, uh, additional 20% from the one hand and shield passive while we're blocking. Um, we're assuming we have a 7k shield. Um, so this is uh, kind of an arbitrary number that I picked here. Um, obviously, you can kind of sh uh, change accordingly. 15% reduction from maim, 8% reduction from minor protection, 
13 from Hardy, and we're assuming this is a direct damage hit, so we're using Ironclad, and we have 22% from Ironclad. So right now, this value here, pre, is uh, what you would get um, right now. Uh, actually, I have to initialize all these variables first. So pre right now is actually what's going to be um, basically what is going what you're taking right now on live. So if you're tanking right now on live and you have an 80k base hit and you have a 7k shield with 30k resistances and all these different passives and things like that and debuffs, you're taking about about a 7k hit or so. Uh, obviously this is going to be truncated so it's going to be 69, 61. So this is what it is on live right now. Now in Merkmire, resistances, uh, which is right here, is going to be placed over here instead. So right now you can see that we have the base and it's multiplied by all the different damage done, damage dealt, damage received uh, um, passives and buffs and then you take the shield uh, amount out of that and then you multiply that by the block mitigation, your passives and your resistances. So now they're just shifting to resistances here up to the top here so this is going to be lumped together with main protection, hardy, ironclad, things like that and then subtracted from your shield. So post is what's going to be uh, what your take damage will be taking in Merkmire when it goes live, assuming they don't change anything like this uh, at all. So you can see here we're taking 5816 damage opposed to the 6961 damage. So in this instance, we managed to uh, reduce our damage taken by about 1150. Um, so if we take a look at that from a percentage uh, view here, that's about a 16.5% reduction, um, relative reduction in the damage we're taking here. Now I did just for fun. I just wanted to see whether or not Zoss kind of screwed up the code again, because as we all know, there are obviously bugs that that, they, that come up, things that are unintended. So there might be a possibility that, um, and this is uh, before I had someone confirm this for me uh, on Toxic Rating Environment, um, that the resistances are actually being double dipped in that it's being counted once before the shield is subtracted and then once again afterwards. I don't think this is happening um, just based on what I saw on Touch Rating Environment when I asked if anybody had tested this. Um, it did seem that it wasn't being double dipped at all, but if it was being double dipped, um, it's a very, very large reduction here. So it's basically a reduction of more than 50% here. Um, so I don't think this is the case. Just based on the data that I've seen, it doesn't seem like uh, the reduction is actually uh, being double dipped at all. The resistance just seems to have been shifted up forward, uh, so it is going to be damage um, boost basically. So we have 16.5% here with an 80k base, 7k shield, and then I just basically took a couple of different values here just to kind of get a sense of things. So 120k base, 10k shield. This might be something like you know Zamaja's Nocturnal Favor, and you have Igneous up or something like that. Um, so if we change our base and our shield and change our pre and our post and then we have a pre would be about 10.5k damage and our post would be 8900 instead for a reduction of about 15.5% and then I did something smaller so 60k base 3k shield and then so you'd be normally blocking 5.6k on live and you'd, you'd be uh, reducing that to 5.1k on Merkmire or about a 8.6 percent relative mitigation. So overall, this is definitely a buff for tanks, um, and it does make a couple of skills more viable now. Uh, so Templar tanks with Blazing Shield, Health tanks uh, for Templars, it's going to be pretty nice mitigation there. Um, things like Bone Shield will be a lot stronger now. Uh, it might be worth having Bone Shield being run on like an off tank or a healer potentially uh, for the additional shields. Um, Igneous might actually be a very decent option if you need the additional damage mitigation instead of Fragmented. Um, so basically you'll be giving up major, major mending uh, in exchange for a larger damage shield. Um, so it's kind of up to you if you want to do that or not. But this change pretty much helps everybody across the board. Um, this of course doesn't involve the, the changes that was made to annulment and its morphs and the stork shield those still have the one second cast time um, but once you have the shield up it will be able to help mitigate more damage this way um, now shields it seems still don't inherit crit resistance so it does seem like while you are able to crit on these shields um, you don't have any crit resistance, so it'll be the full damage that you take, uh, minus obviously your physical or spell resistance. And, the, and this kind of formula will also apply to uh, PvE as well. So Zotasha, for instance, when it has the damage shield up, it'll be using the 18,200 resistances on the front end rather than the back end. Um, 
obviously that's not really going to matter too much for pve because you will already be at the penetration cap so that uh, this value here just basically reduces down to one so you don't have to worry about that in pve uh, but for pvp this is a pretty nice buff the damage shield so healing ward ward ally uh, like i said bone shield uh, blazing spear uh, blazing shield those all got a nice buff both in pve and in pvp uh, so overall uh, depending on the base hit and the size of your shield this looks like to be a pretty decent damage mitigation buff um, anywhere from i'd say between 5 and 20 percent additional mitigation so really really nice uh, very nice improvement to our sub ability in both pve and pve so that's it for this video hope you guys found this informative if you guys have any questions about this please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below um, and i will revisit this if they happen to update this at all in the process of the pts cycle hope you guys found this video informative and i will see you guys in the next dungeon